Hi everyone, welcome back. I have a Stampin' Up! stencil with like a brick texture um, or design. I have a card base, just a plain white card base. And then I have the leafy, no, the uh, tree backdrop, leafy tree backdrop uh, in the portrait from Lawn Fawn, um, as well as the one of the additions. And then I have a stitch rectangle that's just an A2 size, so it's the largest of the large. Um, from Lawn Fawn and then I also have the Builder House plus the spring add-on for the Builder House um, So I've used pieces from both sets. I haven't used all the pieces from each set, but I've used the majority of them So I wanted to try out the spring uh, add-on So to start with I've left that little piece that will cut out because the the Builder House is great because you can use it to create a um, reveal wheel as well but I decided I'm not doing that today. I'm just using it as a little house. So you can do either or. So I kept the piece that would cut out for the reveal wheel and just left that in and taped it with some washi tape at the back. And then I've lined up my stencil where I want it on the front of the house, obviously, because <laughs> you wouldn't want to ink the back of the house. You're not going to see it. Hello. Um, and I have temporarily used some washi tape to just hold it in place while I stencil. It just makes it easy on small pieces like this or smaller pieces than this. Um, you could also use a um, like a temporary adhesive spray on your stencil and then stick that to the, the uh, image or the cutout. But I just this was quicker and easier. And then I used some hickory smoke. Um, distressing just to go uh, just to make my bricks and then I used a little bit of it without re-inking it over the top of it again so that it just gives it that more so there's not harsh lines or white in the background if that makes sense and then I've got some rustic wilderness and peeled paint um, I'm using oxides today just because they blend like butter <laughs> um, and this is box standard cardstock. So again, I tried different cardstocks and I gotta say, even this was a little tricky to blend. So maybe I need to actually drag out my um, Bristol Smooth, which is for me, one of the best cardstocks or the a watercolor cardstock. And not all watercolor cardstocks are equal, right? They're all a little different, but the Tim Holtz one, because it's his brand, is made to work with these inks. So his brand is, and Ranger's, watercolor papers are fantastic for this and for getting that blend on um, and I just used both of those greens just until I was happy so that I had like a, a sort of variant in color if you if you like <laughs> it's a fancy word for a Monday but <laughs> well, it won't be Monday when you're watching this but well it might be actually depending when you're watching this anyway shut up Janine right so <laughs> I'm now going to take some ground espresso and some gathered twigs distress oxides and what I want to do is I want to keep my frame white, but I want to cut the, oh, I want my tree, sorry, to be a different color. So the, the leaves of the tree, if you like, is that funny piece that I, I inked in green, that actually cuts separately, it's a separate die. But the tree cuts out of the whole frame. So I wanted to keep them kind of separate. So I just cut the tree out. <laughs> and then on the back of it, I wrote which was the top and which was the bottom, because obviously where I've cut out, there are, slight edges I didn't cut it out perfectly <laughs> I just kind of winged it um, but it cut out pretty well um, but I just wanted to know which was the top which is the bottom that's a little I'm a little bit OCD about that anyway so I would have to even if it cut out perfectly <laughs> so, and then I just used the gather twigs on the bottom uh, on the top and the well on the whole thing and then I used some of the ground express espresso to drag up from the bottom so it's got that again it's got that sort of shading from dark to light and now i'm going to take some honey wild honey and scattered straw i thought there'd be a nice color combo um scattered straw kind of has this almost like there's a pinkiness in it um so this is the wild honey um and i'm just i, I just the thing i was showing you there as well is to decide which way you'll remember which way you're going to be making your gradient um <laughs> for your or which way your card's going to go so that you know which way your your ombre if you like is going to go it's not a, it's not an ombre ombre but the, the way the colors fade in into each other um but yeah scattered straw, scattered straw can't talk has almost a a pinky when you're using it up close it's got a slight pinkiness to it it's kind of weird or maybe peachy not pink kind of a peachiness to it 
and um, and it, it's so lovely so I just I thought that would work really well with the um, the wild honey <laughs> I lost what it was and then I used a uh, distress sprayer with some water of course and then I used my um, aqua shimmer pen by Nouveau or Tonic Studios and I just squeezed it a little bit and then I just tapped it with my finger like I've shown you there just to get a little bit of shimmer in the background not too fussed if there wasn't too too much but it just adds a little something to that sort of I don't know sunset sunrise <laughs> kind of background and then there's all these pieces and there's a lot of pieces and they're really little <laughs> so, and I'm not great with little pieces but I made it work and so what I have is there's I'm going to try and do this in steps so that I can show you what's going on so there's a little flower a uh, flower box I guess so I cut the flower box out twice and then there's a separate die that cuts the flower heads so I cut them out in yellow and then the flowers and the flower box I cut in green for the leaves and the stems um, and then I cut them out again in the red so that I could cut the flowers off and so that my flower boxes are red so when you're when you've got dies like this where you have you know where there's one die but it's it sort of represents two parts <laughs> like kind of like this then try and see you, you might be able to make it work and, and do something like this where you can sort of made one part the color it needs to be and then like in this case the flower box is now red um, and then I've still got the separate die for all the little flower heads so I decided to use yellow for like yellow tulips I don't know why but it was very springy <laughs> for me <laughs> and like I say these are really tiny um, I'm just using a quickie glue pen and I actually found it, it works fine like as a glue once you know if it's blue it's it's the it's the sticky bit if you like but because it's quite liquidy it kind of moved around quite a bit <laughs> so um, I found it a little bit harder to work with than say the just a normal tacky glue which is what I would normally use except the tacky glue which I'm using now <laughs> is a little messier so it depends what you want to what you want to do now the the water part of the um, this little bird bath it actually fits inside the slit that it that the dye creates for the main part of the water bath a uh, bird bath sorry and then when you line it up if you once you get it right in there you line it up it actually sits and it looks three-dimensional because it looks like there's water inside that little water bath uh, water bath <laughs> bird bath <laughs> hello um, I yeah my camera my camera cut out sorry so I just thought I'd show you I put all the windows together um, and including some yellow for like the inside of the house um, although it's a springy day so I don't know why you would have yellow on the inside I could have used a light pale or a pale blue or a white with a bit of really pale blue ink over the top um, but I wanted to show you that mailbox I cut the letter the like letter box the letter out three times so that I could have it really stuffed full of letters and then I have the heart I actually that part of it cuts out all in one so I cut it out twice one in red and one in grey and then that way I can have a red heart on my mailbox um, and then for the house I suddenly realized at this point I didn't have the door <laughs> every door I mean every house needs a door right uh, yeah so I quickly cut that out um, and then I wanted everything to be super matchy matchy here so I honestly quite badly cut the <laughs> the door part off it wasn't straight at all but I wasn't going to waste it and so I just made it work um, I just kind of straightened as much as I could on the door frame so the the door frame is then the same color as all the frames around the windows um, but yeah I, I kind of realized I'd start <laughs> forgot, totally forgot the door and you'll see in a second I forget the doorknob as well Ah, see sort of thought ahead on this one um but what i did with the the sort of middle roof the bit that's um yeah the the piece of roof that's on the about halfway up the house is i actually put part of that on foam which i i did show you but i was too busy talking about the post box <laughs> so um and i actually popped that 
part of that up on some foam because it just gave it a bit more dimension and that piece that die cuts on the edge the sort of um, scalloped edge it just makes it look more 3d with a little bit of foam behind it so very very cool you didn't i didn't have to do that you you know you could stick it flat and it looked just as cute so here comes the doorknob <laughs> the doorknob <laughs> what was i thinking seriously um but yeah got the got the doorknob on the door <laughs> and then i wanted to add the flower boxes to both windows I thought that would be really cute there's actually there's the flower box and then there's also a hanging basket um, which comes with flowers it's teeny tiny um, but I actually I like what happened what I did here um, instead but you could have the door in the middle and then have flower uh, hanging baskets either side of the door so you could do it like that as well so this is where I was trying to decide whether I wanted to put the frame on some foam and I decided to just keep it flat I just um, well I figured it would also fit together more like a puzzle I think if I had separate frames um, and Lawn Fawn do have some frame dies um, if I just if I had some frames then maybe I would um, you know do it that way instead but and sort of add the frame to the top of the whole piece uh, instead of having to cut the tree out and do what I've done but I like it. I like how it turned out. Um, it's because they're all the same, the sizing's the same. Um, it, it just works really well. And this is where it was good to know which was the top, which was the bottom. So I'm just getting the leaves um, put in for the tree uh, once I finagle the bottom of the frame because I didn't cut it off straight. So I <laughs> needed to just tweak it shall we say <laughs> although in theory it should just fit anyway but you know it's it's what your eyes see sometimes you you make these things and then you, you suddenly realize oh actually that doesn't look right <laughs> so i had to finagle it a little bit but that's okay and then i added the trees in and then uh, sorry the leaves of the tree and then i just used some wet glue for the tree trunk and branches and because i could see because i had this the, the the frame the out the white frame the right way up I could actually see roughly where the tree actually lines up because of where I'd cut it off so it actually worked out quite well and now I'm going to take these I cut two of these fences this little a little like picket fence in the die set and so I cut two of these out to um, just to add in and then I'm just sort of gauging how much I need because I don't need the full both full pieces if you, if that makes sense so I'm just going to trim one of them down and it fits inside the frame perfectly um, just worked out really well <laughs> and then when I go to put the and they're all stuck flat and when I go to put the house on then it actually sits right in the right place it just it couldn't have been more perfect <laughs> it just worked out that way I didn't plan this bit at all I mean you guys have seen I forgot the door and I've got the door handle and well you know so I was kind of flying by the seat of my pants at this point. Anyway, so I then am going to stick my little teeny tiny little <laughs> but very full mailbox and I love it. It's so cute. Um, and then my little bird bath with the little blue bird which also comes with the die set. And I'm keeping everything within that white frame um, just so that it uh, frames it more if you like if i had or if you guys have the frame the set of frames that you get that lawn fawn have or another company you might have another company's frames that would fit this you could just keep layering up so that it really looked like a frame um, around the whole card and then of course i've got to add some glossy accents <laughs> when do i i see i love it at the moment <laughs> i seem to be loving it so uh, just to a few places like the doorknob, the heart, the flowers, uh, the water in the bird bath that just made sense because it's like shiny like water. Um, you know what I mean. <laughs> so, and then I also didn't put any um, sentiment on this one either because I thought again this could be 
a Valentine's because there's a little heart and the letters. It could be a spring card. It could be a happy new home card. It could be for a number of things or just a thinking of your card. So it it works. You know, it could work for a number of different occasions. So I decided to leave it blank in case I choose at some other point <laughs> or decide at some point what I need and who, you know, what, what sentiment I want to put on it at that point. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, yes, there's a lot of pieces, <laughs> but it's super cute. And there's a billion different things you could do. Um, just let your imagination soar. So I will see you in the next one, guys. Bye.